Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more BD Armoury. Today we are taking a look at the latest version of the mod, 1.4.14. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. I think the last one I covered was 1.4.6 and a whole bunch has changed since then, so uh, we're going to be taking a look at a, a select few of these changes. In the background you can see a quick fight I threw together in the latest version of BD Armoury between two of my Lynxes and two of the winners of the little mini tournament I did for my recent Christmas special, uh, Legedlax uh, Christmas special package delivery. Uh, yeah, turns out uh, some stray bullets killing the pilot will make these things a sitting duck, which is, which is kind of fun. A couple of quick notes before we get down to business. I know that myself and others have had stability issues with this version of BD Armory, so it might be worth waiting to see if 1.4.14.1 comes out in the near future. Uh, and also, a uh, confusion that's arisen when I've done uh, previous videos like this. I'm not one of the BD Armory devs. I'm not formally associated with them. I'm just an appreciator of their works and someone who uses it in his videos. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's see what goodies we have in store. Of course, it goes without saying that between 1.4.6 and 1.4.14, there have been many changes. Uh, there's been a ton of bug fixes. There have been, you know, there's new AI settings for you to play about with. But uh, one of the big things and the first thing I want to highlight is changes to sort of materials and armor. If I just select a random bit of the wing here and right click on it, you'll notice there's a new slider in there that wasn't there before. And that's for hull material. We can see the current setting is the default aluminium. There are also two different ones. I drag that to the left hand side. It, uh, <laughs> it's about to say it gives me wood. Let's, uh, let's gloss over that. To the right hand side, we get steel. Um, so what differences does that make? Well, look at the hit points. 700 for the aluminium, 200 for the wood, chortle, and then, what are we, 1200 for the uh, steel. Now, is there a trade-off for this? Yes, there is. Let's bring up the engineer's report here. You can see the mass given there. Uh, we drag it down to wood, that decreases the mass uh, back up to aluminium and then up to steel. You can see the mass increasing. And, I mean, it's not a lot, just when I just do that one wing section, but you can imagine over the entirety of the craft, uh, you can do it on the fuel, fu uh, the fuel fuselages, if I can get the word out, the cockpit, the um, the radome there, uh, even the uh, the landing gear, and something I noticed earlier, you can even do it on the missile pylons. Have a play about with it. You can't do it. You can't make the uh, the engines with though. Though you can make them steel if you want to bulk them up and give them a few extra hit points. Um, anyway, yeah, let's. Uh, Let's go see what that means in an actual combat situation. So I've set two teams up on the runway for a, a simple 2v2. Uh, the first pair of craft will be a pair of my vanilla lynxes. Nothing special there, you've seen them on this channel many times before. The others will be, well, I've taken advantage of a couple of the changes in uh, this version of BD Armoury. First of all, we are using one of the guns that was introduced uh, one or two versions ago, the uh, the GAL-22. It's sort of a halfway house between the, the Vulcan and the GAL-8 in terms of both... Um, both damage and accuracy, and I know it's popular with a lot of people. I have already covered this on the channel before, so I'm not going to spend too much time going over it. It also does, uh, BD Armour now does include the 22mm uh, ammunition box you need for that. Um, the other difference, the major difference I've made is this entire craft is now made, yes, is now made out of wood, or at least as many of the parts as I could uh, I could change over. So this is going to be much lighter. The, uh, the traditional Lynx is I think it's about 12 and a half tons this is about seven and a half tons so we're not we're not really talking about a, a halving of it but sort of getting on towards that so let's uh, let's go and see what we can do here one of the things you'll notice here uh, there's some extra stuff in the uh, in the game modes uh, space combat tools you can click there space friction ignore gravity blah blah blah, blah enable repulsor effect yeah, this uh, this version of BD Armory does come with greatly increased support for space combat, although that's not something we're going to be looking at today. I just thought I'd mention it as it's something a lot of I know that a lot of people have been asking for. But uh, yeah, as for today, let's uh, let's get this competition started. Okay, so this thing is very manoeuvrable and was stupidly quick to accelerate. Um, but as I said, the trade-off is, yeah, a greatly reduced hit point count. So this thing is going to be, yeah, it's going to be much more agile. And if we get into uh, close quarters combat, it will definitely have the edge. 
but it's... Mm, hang on, does this thing got... No, this thing doesn't have missiles. <laughs> made a slight mistake with this uh, with this fight. So not only not only is this craft made entirely of wood, which uh, which increases its manoeuvrability, it's also got no missiles on it. That's sort of a, a hangover from a previous video I did. I didn't check that, but... Uh, yeah, oh my word! Gunfire comes in already. The uh, the um, the wooden the wooden uh, links takes a bit of a hit. It does some damage. It doesn't look like it was anything fatal though. Again, we're going in for some jousts now. I would expect. Uh, well, if Adam Kerman actually did decide to get around, uh, he would have the advantage. But oh my god, damage going in over there! Damage going in over there, and it is the it is the wooden links. The wooden links. Be be appropriate if it was spruce, wouldn't it? It's called the Hercules. Um, yeah, just the added maneuverability means you can just come round and just disassemble the other links with ease. Wow. Of course, you know, one hit on these things and they're dead. Well, not one hit, obviously, as we've seen, but oh my god. Yeah. As I say, it's a trade-off, but at the moment it's a trade-off that is very much working in the favour of the uh, the wooden lynxes, although Adam Kerman could be in trouble here. One of the uh, vanilla lynxes has managed to get around on his tail, although this could be problematic for the uh, the one remaining vanilla lynx, as he now has the attention of two of these kind of super manoeuvrable versions of my, uh, my current frontline craft. Look at that. Oh... That, uh, oh god, the sound bug here kicks in. Uh, of course it does. Oh yeah, Luna Kerman already missing uh, just a little bit of a wingtip there. Comes around, trying to avoid the uh, trying to avoid the other craft lining up guns on her. Oh, look like she might come around and get a bit of a shot there, but no. And I think it'll only be a matter of time before the other lynxes manage to get those, uh, those Gower 22s lined up and get some shots away. Luna Kerman desperately trying to come round, desperately trying to line up that shot, but these uh, these things are just they are just too manoeuvrable for her. And oh my god, two streams of Gao twenty two fire just obliterate her. So uh, yeah, it's another option for you to consider with your craft. As I said, it is a trade off, but uh, as I said once again, it's it's a trade off which definitely worked in favour of the of the wooden craft here. Back in the space plane hangar then, uh, not with an aircraft this time, but with my medium tank. And uh, we're going to take uh, a look at one of the other materials changes that's been made uh, in recent versions of BD Armoury. If we just click on a random armour panel, we'll see we don't have the usual slider to, uh, as we saw last time, to change the material. What we do have though is a new slider to uh, to change the armour type. By default we have uh, al aluminium or aluminium for those of you uh, of, uh, of an American disposition and we can change this. We can put it up to mild steel, to titanium, beryllium, aramid fibre or Kevlar basically, uh, S-glass composite and finally depleted uranium. Now this will change the mass of the, uh, the armour. Uh, we can also see a little bit of a cost there which should give you a bit of a clue as to how effective these will be in combat. Uh, one of the other changes, one of the things that was fixed was also the M1 Abrams cannon. The uh, the armor thickness and armor type is now working correctly. Uh, yeah, so we can um, whack that all the way up if we want. And uh, yeah, the, the medium tank has been a bit of a pushover in some of the videos I've done. So I'm going to try and use those settings to see if I can give it a refit and breathe some new life into it. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Smith's All Depleted Uranium Battle Tank. This um, this thing doesn't move very well, if at all. Yeah, uh, unlike my previous version, uh, which you saw in the space plane hangar, which came in a little under 50 tonnes, this is over 350. So, mmm, as close to just a stationary gun emplacement as I think you can get uh, when, while having wheels on it. Um, so I'm going to put this into a quick fight. I say quick, it's probably going to last an age and will be heavily edited against their nemesis, the craft I have which always, always outdoes the my medium tank, the uh, the Toy Soldiers Scuttler by Omega or Omega, depending on, the, depending on your outlook on life. And I set them up uh, about a kilometre and a half. Where's the other one? Oh, it's over there. A kilometre and a half away. And I want to see what difference the um, what difference the armor will make to this fight. Let's get everybody uh, going, and then turn on the guard mode. And yeah, there we go. Gunfire coming in. 
Let's see what difference this makes. Shots landed. Yeah. I think this is going to go on for a while. Okay, yeah, these tanks holding up exceptionally well under gunfire. I mean, barely moving, but holding up. It does look like the M230 might have been nerfed a bit in the, in recent versions of BD Armoury. Um, what just happened there? Did, uh, did one of these take a hit? One of these might have taken a hit. What are you doing now? No idea. Josh Kerman continuing to blaze on in there, though. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to have been as accurate as it has been in previous fights at the moment. Getting a few shots landing. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, this... <laughs> This medium tank has suffered the fate that, uh, yeah, all the rest of my tanks have normally suffered, which is to just be decapitated. The the armour on every other, everything else, though, is holding up stupidly well. Barely a scratch on it. So it's, yes, it's up to this, my last, my last functional medium tank to incredibly slowly win the day for us. Okay, so one of the scuttlers has been basically decapitated as it's had its crew member taken out. Uh, yeah, some pretty nasty damage on that, and of course it's lost its gun as well. The other one, still closing the distance, which is brave, considering it's lost its ammunition. It's lost its ammunition box and so cannot fire. So, finally, finally, at long last, <laughs> the tanks win against the scuttlers, that other scuttler getting in very up close and personal with that tank, which uh, might not be a good idea, because at that close range, no, it still still can't hit a barn door with a banjo. Oh my god, that was a direct hit! Which one was that? Yeah, that just gets blown to smithereens. Josh Kerman still very bravely dancing around the place. Doing some quite sick manoeuvres, though. Wow. Anyway, I think we better... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think we better leave it there and uh, move on and see what else we have to cover. Just before we get to our final fight, there's a couple of things I want to go over. Uh, now, in the last video where I covered 1.4.6, I highlighted a couple of new game modes for BD Armoury, one of which was Battle Damage. And if you've got Battle Damage mode turned on, it means that uh, you can cause fires on opposing craft, and that fire can spread, causing damage over time. And there are fire bottles to counter this. But um, in 1.4.7, something was introduced. If you click on the guns here, we can select Ammo Type. Now, there's only two things at the moment moment, armor-piercing explosive, the default kind, and armor-piercing incendiary, which is much, much more likely to cause those fires if you do have the battle damage game mode turned on. Uh, something I didn't mention in my last video, which I probably should have done, so I'll, I'll fix that now, uh, added in 1.4.3 was uh, a selection priority setting for your weapons, which when combined with the uh, minimum and maximum range gives you much greater flexibility of choosing how your craft will select its weapon at different ranges. Um, but yes, those two things aside, one new addition since 1.4.6 and one I really should have covered in the last video, we've, uh, we've got uh, yeah, one last thing to look at. So we move from a review of current features to a bit of a preview of works in progress that are sort of hidden away in the options menu if you know where to look. Um, this is going to be a, a fairly standard fight. We have a couple of my lynxes. I've put them up against a subscriber craft I think would be a decent match, and I've plumped for Ben Aaron's S16 Mark II Mighty Max. But this is going to be a fight with a difference. You see, I have enabled zombie mode, and what zombie mode does is any damage that is not inflicted onto the root part, which should normally be the cockpit, um, will be greatly, greatly reduced. Um, I've had done a little bit of testing with it. It can get quite ridiculous. Obviously, there are there's a bit of a risk of some expo exploits going on here, but... I think it should be a bit of fun. There's another one, uh, Disco Mode, which I tried to get working, but I couldn't. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get that into a video as soon as I can. But for the moment, we'll just have to uh, settle for Zombie Mode. Let's, um, let's get this one going. The competition starts. The Mighty Maxes are quickly around and very quickly away with a trio of missiles from this one. 
Uh, what are they set for? Four missiles per target. They only got the three arm rounds away. I assume that's because the Sidewinders are set up to uh, only launch at closer range. Uh, everybody dodges missiles for the moment, um, although missiles aren't as much of a threat as they used to be, given that they have to hit the root part in order to do any damage whatsoever. Well, all but a negligible part bit of damage. Uh, some more side one is going, oh my god, these things are maneuverable. Uh, okay, I think these might be, would otherwise be more than a match for my, uh, for my Lynxes, but uh, we'll have to see how this game mode sort of evens the odds. Let's switch to one of my um, Lynxes. I think this one is taking a little bit of damage. The sound bug kicks in because of course it does. Yeah, little bit of a jouster going on, but yeah. Only got a scorching. The Mighty Mats comes back around trying to line up guns again. How's the other Lynx getting on? Coming around, guns going in. It's it's less manoeuvrable the links, but it's just manoeuvrable enough to dodge the gunfire, which is kind of annoying because that's what we want to see in this fight. Oh come on, take some damage. You know you want to. Yeah, I think this fight might go on for a while and might be subject to some pretty heavy editing. Gunfire rains in on this links, and oh my god, the other links was killed. The other links was killed. Basically, that means, oh my god, the other the Lynx just got killed as well. Now, the only way that can happen is if the root part gets hit, basically. So, these were both gunning for my cockpit. And they hit my cockpit, and unlike the rest of the craft, which suffers a heavy damage reduction, the cockpit doesn't. And so, they were killed. Anyway, yes, that is my look at uh, BD Armoury uh, version 1.4.14. As I said, might be some stability issues in there. I had some early on. Haven't had any uh, more recently, though, so it's not looking too bad. Um, yes, shout out to the uh, to the BD Armoury developers uh, for creating and maintaining this fantastic mod. This is the uh, Project Runway version of the mod, by the way. Uh, there's been something of a fork and the regular version isn't being developed anymore. So this is basically BD Armory now. I'll put a link to it in the description so you can uh, download that at your leisure. Um, there's a ton of stuff. I There's no chance in hell I'd be able to cover everything in one video, even if I made it an hour long. Um, there's new mechanics for underwater stuff. There's new mechanics for nuclear weapons. Um, there's just you'll just have to go and play about it with it. I think that's the joy of BD Armory. Just um, just pick it up and just see what settings there are and see what they do, and uh, and have some fun with them. Anyway, yes, uh, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider, uh, if you haven't already, liking, subscribing, uh, maybe following me on Twitter, uh, getting involved with the Discord, great KSP and BD Armory community on there. Um, all those links in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon. If you want to help support the channel and maybe get your own Patreon Kerbal for me to, uh, to kill time and time and time again. I will be back soon with some more BD Armory. Until then, though, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.